this thing because Tom has a unique, I wish he could go for quite a bit more and get into the historical stuff that he really knows because he, you know, you have these constitutional experts. Um, you've got the people that are, you know, go around and teach all the time and, and they are good. They know the constitution, they know the declaration, but he understands it all the way from the Magna Carta all the way forward. And he understands the implications and where the source of our liberty is and, and all the implications of that. So um, with God's help, we're not going to lose this country on our watch. But the thing is, is um, that I'm here to kind of introduce the next segment of the Tea Party movement or the next phase of it. Um, I'm, I'm sick of arbitrary approaches. Um, you know, the, the, the Tea Party, I'll get to it in my presentation here in a second, the Tea Party is very nebulous movement. Um, and a lot of that nebulous aspect is because we unconsciously buy into the narrative of the left. We are always fighting the battles of the left's choosing. And most recently, uh, I know Jennifer, um, uh, they deal with this all the time at TeaParty.net. Um, the media was out there proclaiming the death of the Tea Party like a week ago. And it seems like every two months they come out and proclaim the death of the, of the Tea Party movement. And the problem is we um, accept to an extent that they may have a, a point to their premise. And we sit there and we look around at each other and we say, we pinch, pinch ourselves and say, are we still here? Oh, we're still here. And so instead of spending all that time, you know, acknowledging that we're still here, let's get in, involved and develop long-term strategies to take this country back and figure that we're, you know, unless God comes back, we're, we're here for the duration. So let's build some long-term strategies and plans because you're not going to be able to win this war unless you have uh, plans and strategies. You, you can't, can't do that. So, um, State of the Tea Party. Uh, about two years ago, we started kind of asking the question about the Tea Party. Um, what is it? And then we started asking people, like, what are the goals of the Tea Party? Um, so I had a friend who uh, works in, in uh, SOCOM. And he said that for fun, they actually studied the Tea Party movement. And they said that this Tea Party, they would classify as a self-organizing system. And the typical nature of a self-organizing system is it doesn't really last all that long. And the more you try to put it together, the, the more it falls apart. So, um, but the Tea Party is comprised of two elements. Uh, if you look at like the 9, 12, and we've got Darla Daywalt is gonna be here later today um, speaking to you. She was actually the architect of, or one of the architects of the 9-12 march on DC. Um, and I'll, I'll reveal the other one there. You had a principal element and a populist element. At 9-12 we had, because we had like one point something million people out there in DC, you definitely had a populist element to the Tea Party movement. But you also have a principal element, and those are the ones that don't waver, the guys that are in this room. We've been persistent, we've, we're still here, uh, we're not compromised, we're not going away. The populist element kind of ebbs and flows, and they, you know, if it looks like it's gonna work out, then they'll stick with you. If not, they, they go away. Okay, but that's, that's the nature of things. That's the nature of a self-organizing system. Well, we brought Tom in to talk about the pitfalls of restoration. Because if we are successful and restore this country, um, we're, in a, we're in a quiet time right now. We're in the principled element uh, aspect right now because we got you know the fewer we don't have that populist element. But if we are, I'm sorry, let me get to why I actually brought Tom in. We tried to place where is the Tea Party in relation to the founding of the country. What year would we be in? And we kind of settled on around the 1760s because what that was that was a time where Thomas Jefferson was going around listening to all the conventions and. They, he concluded, he even wrote, he said, you know, the country's not ready for this revolution, uh, but there will be a time when it is. And so he was going around listening to Patrick Henry and all these other guys. But during that time, they didn't sit idle. They secured things. They, they started putting things in place that ensured that when the populist element reemerged into the movement and the revolution occurred, that their principles would guide the outcome. And you have two, two roads that could have gone. One was the American Revolution, the second was the French Revolution. And ours 
thanks to the Declaration of Independence and all the work those guys put in, um, their principles steered that populist element when it reemerged into the into the conflict. So that's what we need to be doing during this time. We need to make sure that anything that we do going forward is completely in sync with the principles of the Declaration of Independence and everything that led to the Declaration of Independence. Um, Tea Party is a reactionary force. Um, we tend to respond to whatever the left is doing. You know, we get out there. Now, we do have to do that. We have to have elements. That was awesome. Um, we have to have elements. You can tell about public speaker. Um, that do respond to those conflicts. We have to have people on the, on the field. But a couple years ago, we started withdrawing elements to look at the battlefield from bird's eye view and not just be uh, at those, you know, conflict points with the left and just stay there alone. We're never going to win the battle with these guys if all we do is engage uh, in the arenas that they draw us into. So, uh, Nebulous, we already talked about that. Um, the Tea Party tends to engage too late in things. Um, we, when an issue pops up and they're threatening to pass amnesty or something like that, that's when we get involved and do that stuff. Now, I, I don't mean that as an absolute. I mean, there's, there's groups out there, organizations that are always fighting that battle. But as a large force standing up to that, the left is always planning this stuff behind the scenes, making, uh, getting ready to push these things forward, uh, even when we don't see it going on. So, again, we engage in the uh, battles of the left's choosing. And then, this is the other thing, few specific long-term goals. Um, Tom is notorious, I guess, now for stealing um, thunder because he, he pulled out the communist goals. And Matthew's going to talk a little about the communist goals, so I'm like doubling down on him. Um, anyway, um, we started looking at the left. How did the left achieve what they achieved, and what were their goals, what, what did they do? So, of course, we settled on the communist goals because that was them putting into words what they wanted to do. And they've accomplished almost every one of those goals. Um, then I started asking the Tea Party people that I was meeting with when we were trying to get this strategic thing rolling and said, what are the Tea Party's goals? Anybody? Crickets. Crickets. It's like, take the country back. Oh, okay. How? Um, how are we going to do that? So um, if you guys look, we've got, uh, Ted, are you around? Um, did anybody in their program see the 50 goals of the conservative movement? Uh, if you don't have it, just hold up your hand and, and Ted will get one out to you. But um, we actually are proposing 50 goals of the, common, uh, of the conservative movement, not the Tea Party movement. But. So, we'll get to those in a second. Actually, I'm not really even going to go over those specifically. I'll let you guys chew on them. The other thing is, we are reluctant to acknowledge what we're up against. Um, you can look at America as a, as a culture, and if you say that their president is, doesn't like the country and is you know, acting against it, you've got a large element of the country that refuses to believe that. Well, the Tea Party is the same way. We don't want to fully accept what we're up against. We don't want to look at that big monster and see everything that we are facing. But we have to. Um, this is no, this is the age old battle. It's good versus evil. God versus the devil, whatever you want to say. Um, and we're reluctant to accept all that. So, <laughs> this is the other tendency of that is you remain hopeful rather than looking up at the Leviathan. You just say, well, I hope someday, you know, if we vote, if we do this, that, or the other thing, it's going to turn around. Um, it's not going to this time at all. I'll show you why. Uh, and then this is something that we've got now. Is we've got the federal branches conspiring. Remember, we're supposed to have separation of powers. Well, now they're all working together uh, in conjunction. And they're drawing the states into that as well by putting the states on welfare, you know, giving them federal dollars for things. And they're also getting big business involved in this as well. So somehow we have to break up that illusion. Um, this is a simple thing. This is all the left is about. It, there's, there are no communists at the top. All these guys are thieves. They just want to steal capital and power. And how are they doing it? Dependency. 
Everything they do is, is to promote dependency. Um, you've got, you know, debt is one of the big dependencies. You've got kids.